Welcome to the Destiny Church Podcast. This is the podcast where we like to take some time and have some authentic conversations. Hopefully it'll encourage you, challenge you to grow in your faith and your following of Jesus. My name's Jonathan Rivers, lead pastor here at Destiny Church, and today I have a special guest host, Maddie Peterson. She's been a longtime member of the church. She's a personal friend to Vivi and I. Her and her husband, Mike, are amazing. Micah serves on our board of advisors. Uh, but man, he, they're an awesome couple. Maddie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, I'm... Maddie Peterson, and I've been coming to Destiny since, man, shortly after we moved here um, to go to school. I met Jamie at ORU and came to Destiny. We've been here ever since, so that's been probably eight years at least, maybe nine. Um, Yeah, I am a licensed clinical social worker, (laughs) and so uh, worked in outpatient mental health, uh, worked in foster care for six or seven years before I took last year off to be a full-time mama. Yeah. And your baby's so cute. Thank you. My kids call her baby dinosaur, not because (laughs) she looks like a dinosaur. I don't know where it actually came from. I know where it came from. Tell me where it came from. When I was pregnant, Rafa said he would ask a lot about the baby. And I said, I have a picture. Do you want to see the picture of the baby? And he said, yes. So I pulled out the ultrasound and showed him and he said, no, I don't believe you. That he said that is not a baby. That's a dinosaur. And that, yeah, that, that sounds that's exactly like Rafa. Well, it stuck. Uh, Maddie's been on staff here for a season before she uh, finished up her degree. And so, man, we're just thankful. And I'm excited to have her today because today we're talking about something that uh, I think is something that needs to be talked about more in church circles and needs to be talked about more in general. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, an, an aspect of health that maybe we we avoid in church. We talk about spiritual health a lot. Obviously, that's important. Uh, we even talk about uh, physical health in some areas, in some ways. But one thing we kind of shy away from a lot is mental health. Uh, we, we don't talk about mental health a lot. In fact, uh, historically in the church, mental health has had some negative stigmas around it. And so uh, I thought it was important that we take some time, especially in the context of what we're going through as a church. Like right now, we're in this series called uh, Slow Down to Catch Up, uh, which we're kind of establishing this idea of like God wants us to slow down our lifestyle, slow down our processes so that we can find rest for our souls, rest for our minds, uh, free ourselves from some of the anxieties and stresses that this world kind of creates. And so I think one of the things that's important is understanding the need and the importance of what uh, mental health looks like, uh, what emotions are, what what different things are like that. And so we, we're going to have just a conversation and talk a little bit about this. Uh, and I'm excited to hear your your point of view and, and your your side. And so um, what are your, some of your thoughts? Because you've grown up in church, you've grown up in this thing. Like, what are some of your church thoughts in the way that church approaches mental health uh, and, and ways that we can look at it maybe in a different way? Yeah, I'm excited for this conversation. It's definitely something I'm passionate about and a conversation that I think is taking place more and more. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about it with you. Um, I, I have a lot of thoughts. So where to begin, um, I think, is starting with just uh, normalizing mental health. I think even the term mental health, like, I don't know, people automatically associate different things with mental health. And like you mentioned, like, we've been talking about a lot of aspects of health and in this series of slow down to catch up. And um, so I think starting with, yeah, let's just talk about it. What is mental health? Let's, let's normalize uh, this facet of our being. Yeah. Because everybody has emotions. I I mean, they may process those differently, but everyone's emotions, everyone has feelings. uh, Everyone can go through seasons that are difficult um, that for, for whatever reason, for a lot of reasons. And the church kind of had a historical stance of like, if you were a good Christian, then you'd have good mental health. And so there's no reason to look at any other thing, whether it's like counseling or, or other kind of mental health techniques. Like it was just like, Hey, just go to church and, and you'll be fine. And although I think that your relationship with Jesus is a key component, uh, for long-term m- mental health, making sure you understand how to process emotions. Uh, I do know that it's it's not a problem to realize I need help and I need to walk through some of these things. Yeah, for sure. And it's a, a piece of your overall health. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm trained as a social worker. So in the in the world of like counseling and, you know, 
if you're going to go see a therapist, they're going to come from some school of thought. Mm -hmm. And with social work, it's uh, looking at more than just what's going on between your ears. Sure. And that's what drew me to social work because, uh, you know, you could, you could incorporate easily a lot of other aspects like faith and environment. And uh, so that having that framework and being educated in that way, like I felt like really empowered me to use the gifts God had given me to then function in this world of mental health. And something that I um, learned about and used a lot in, when I was doing um, outpatient counseling was the concept of a wellness wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this when you told yeah, me about this. So yeah, so there's a, it's called the wellness wheel. It's eight dimensions of well-being. And I wrote them down. If you'd like me to tell you. I would love you to tell me. All okay. <laughs> They're emotional and mental, which we're talking about today. Environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, social, and spiritual. Um, obviously, the church pay, plays like the biggest role in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. But I, I can see like the church's hand in every single one of those dimensions, which makes me excited. Um, but mental health maybe is the area in that wellness wheel that I think the church has shied away from mm -hmm. yeah. the most. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And, and I like how that approach, that kind of wellness wheel, because it's all those different categories. Uh, and later at the end of this podcast, we're going to have a link with some resources in different ways where people can go and read about some of the stuff on their own if they'd like to. But but all of those different areas and, and categories, it, you know, they're things that can affect you. And, and, you know, in our conversation kind of leading up to this, you talked about you can be doing really good maybe in like physical health uh, and maybe even your spiritual health is great. But if your finances are doing really bad, it can weigh on, on your thought life. It can weigh on how you feel about yourself. So tell me a little bit more about the, how that balance and what we're trying to look at in that. Yeah. Yeah. We're not looking for perfection in mm. all eight dimensions. That would be uh, impossible. And I think that it's a really good visual tool. I do that for myself. Um, I haven't done it this year, but I used to do it at the beginning of every year uh, just to check in, like, where am I at? And what you're looking for is, am I like doing awesome in my physical health? But man, I'm only, you know, like a two out of 10 on sure. spiritual health. Like if that's the case, I need to see like, what's going on there with that? And what you're looking for is balance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if that means like you're a two in all the areas, like, okay, we have room to grow, but yeah, we're not expecting perfection. And one of the things that we're areas. wanting to talk about today is feelings and, and emotions. And, uh, you know, I grew up with this idea that like feelings and emotions were not to be trusted. And you'd hear like, Hey, the heart above all things is deceitful. So, uh, don't listen to your feelings. And, and in some ways I understand, like sometimes you feel contrary to how things in God's word line up and you need to believe his word. But sometimes I think that our feelings and our emotions are, are indicators of things we're going through, things we need to deal with, even in our natural lives, but also in our spiritual journey. How do you feel like emotions and feelings uh, we can utilize and talk about on a daily basis um, in, in our relationships, both with people and, and God? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I had a lot of mixed beliefs about emotions too growing up, not not just because of my family or just because of church, but just because I was a kid that wanted to do the best and <laughs> wanted to please. And so I thought emotions were something I should be able to control. And if I couldn't control the feeling, then, you know, that meant I was bad or wrong. Mm -hmm. um, obviously something that took a lot of time to like work out and I'm s still working through it at times, but, uh, it's okay to have feelings. And honestly, like God created us this way. So feelings have to be important, right? Like I, I think that I used to think logic was really honorable and like, I have the mind of Christ. God created my mind. Like that was easy for me to wrap my head around. But I think if you believe God created your mind and created your logic, then you you have to also believe he created your emotions and what purpose does that uh, serve? So I think emotions act for us like signals. And if, if you're not paying attention to the signal mm -hmm. that the emotion is putting out there, then yeah, you can't be honest with God about maybe some things you're needing to be honest with him about. You can't be honest with your friends, your family, uh, because that emotion is telling you um, something and instead of, listening and figuring out what you need, you you push it to the side and right. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think that there's plenty of biblical examples of feelings and emotion. I mean, first of all, Jesus had emotions. He had feelings. There's different things. He was filled with joy, filled with sadness, filled with sorrow. Those are all emotions that were based on external factors uh, that were that were going on, and he felt those. We know Jesus was was never sinning. Um, but you know, we we also have other characters. You know, I always think about David. Clearly, David was a very emotional person. All you have to read through the Psalms, and it's like sometimes you're like <laughs> David may need help uh, because yeah. one one Psalm is like, "Oh Lord, I love you so much. You're the greatest thing." And then the next thing is like, "You've left me. I'm the lowest of the low." Like yeah. it's all over the place. But I think the thing that David teaches us, it's not having these emotions, even these really negative emotions. That's that's a problem. Is what do you do with them? Mm-hmm. What do you do with them? And in David's case, he was constantly taking them to God yeah. to find some kind of healing or, or hope. But what, what do you think about when we, we encounter these emotions, what, what are some things that we can do? What should we do with them? I think it starts with how do you identify you're having an emotion? Mm. Um, because you don't know what to do with. I think as a culture, we're like, we would like things to do. <laughs> like give yeah. me something to do with this feeling I'm having. And sure. um, for me personally, it starts with like even identifying I'm having an emotion. Yeah. And how you do that is you have to like be still (laughs) and you have to sit with God and you have to assess like, how am I feeling about this? How am I feeling really? Maybe ask yourself twice because sometimes I'm like, I'm fine. And then I'm like, no, I'm actually not fine. Mm -hmm. I feel Mm -hmm. really sad or whatever. Um, And then you take that to God. You tell you're honest with God about your feelings and then, um, you make a choice, like you make a decision about what you're going to do. And maybe that's, you're going to tell the person how you're feeling, or you're going to write about it in your journal to God, or maybe you're going to need to access a coping mechanism that works for you. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I think the first step is identifying like what you're really feeling. Sure. Do you feel like this, this idea of kind of emotions or feeling avoidance is an issue that we have in our culture and our society? Yeah. Do you? I do. (laughs) I think that a lot of people avoid it. Uh, I think that's part of the reason why so many of us try to keep ourselves so busy Mm -hmm. because they would rather go to the next project or watch the next show or, you know, fill in Mm -hmm. the blank with what their, you know, uh, thing of distraction is uh, as opposed to deal with I'm really sad or I'm really anxious. Uh, And I think that's why we maybe have like a, a, it's a little different subject, but like a sleep problem sure. because that's the one place that you have to be still mm-hmm. you have to be quiet and that's when all these people are having all this anxiety and fear yeah. and stress because that's the only time they can't just completely you yeah. know shut everything off mm-hmm. uh and i think that that's a big problem and i think for a believer uh i i think that we shouldn't be looking at uh, avoiding these things because i think these are things sometimes that god is using to help us grow and help us learn uh, to to follow him in a deeper, more more rich way, and so I, I, yeah. yeah, I think avoidance is not a good thing. No, and like some forms of busyness are okay. Like I mean, my guilty sometimes like not so great coping mechanism is to just like clean everything and just like get really distracted. Like I'm good at staying busy, and that in itself is not bad. Mm-hmm. But if I'm doing that to avoid feeling, yeah. then that does become unhealthy because I'll just work myself into the ground. Like now, sometimes if I'm really overwhelmed, do I still use that coping? Absolutely. But the important thing is to realize like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm feeling this way and talk to God about that first. Yeah, no, I think that's good. So when we, when we realize like, Hey, we've, we've identified like, yeah, okay, I'm feeling this way, fill in the blank. Um, What are, what are some things that we can, we can do with it? Because sometimes you know, you can get in those, like, I'm sure you've experienced this, those like feeling loops. Mm-hmm. It's like you're, you're angry and then you're frustrated because you're angry and then you're anxious because you were fresh. Like, and then all of a sudden you're like right back in some kind of weird cycle and you're like, I'm yeah. not going anywhere or improving anything. And mm-hmm. I, I may not even really be identifying the root of what some of these emotions are about. Mm-hmm. What are some tools or some ways that we can try to figure out what's going on? Yeah. Uh, a really simple tool is sitting down and either writing it out on a piece of paper mm-hmm. or writing it on a note on your phone. Um, well, let me back up. <laughs> a simple tool is understanding that your feelings don't exist in a bubble. Mm. Um, your feelings are connected to your thoughts and to your actions. And so anytime you're experiencing 
honestly, for me, it's experiencing thoughts first. Sometimes before I even know what I'm feeling, I'm recognizing like, man, I'm thinking over and over again about this thing. Mm, yeah. And then I'll realize, oh, I'm thinking about this over and over because I'm anxious about this thing or whatever, insert emotion here. And so sitting down and, and identifying like, this is the thought I'm having. This is the feeling that's coming from it. And this is either the action I've already done that I, I'm not feeling great about sure. or an action that I can do to help resolve this cycle I'm in. I like that. So kind of looking back and trying to just take some time to to unwind what is the, the core cause of this or what's the core thought uh, and, and then figuring out how to, to walk through those. Mm -hmm. For you for you personally, you know, especially, you know, having a relationship with God, where does your relationship with God come into these things? Like once you kind of realize, you know, I'm mad or I'm frustrated, like mm -hmm. what, what do you do at that point once you've kind of identified some of these things and how does he play a role in this process? I think that as Christians, we have a resource that a lot the world doesn't have, mm -hmm. which is uh, our Savior, Jesus, our best friend. He's closer to us than a brother, and he he knows us intimately. He formed us, and so going back to that relationship and that voice of truth, because when you when you get to the point of like identifying what you're feeling and you understand the thought process that's gone into these emotions. Um, I think it's easier for for Christians for me to see clearly like oh that's not a that's not a true thought like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's not what God says about me mm, and yeah. what God says about me is the truth even if I don't feel it and so going back to his word um going back to just being with him mm -hmm. and letting him in his presence and and just worshiping him uh come into that process and, yeah. and know like he's already done it. He's already paid for it. Um, and yeah, that just leaning on all of those pillars of, yeah. of our faith. I, I love that. And I love that approach too, because, you know, the Bible talks about taking every thought captive. Uh, you know, having a feeling is not a sin, but you can think your way into a sin. Like you can mm -hmm. think your way into a process, whether the, the thought process itself is a sin. I mean, Jesus says that if you even thought it, you've already committed it. Uh, but even further than that, you can think yourself into an action which you'll regret later. And a lot of times I think that the Bible's like, hey, you can feel this certain way, but the moment that your thoughts start to get out of control and start to not align with the truth of your identity, who you are, the plan, you can you can pull back and say, hey, I am feeling this, and we need to get to the root of what's going on in this feeling, but I also need to not allow my thought life to just get out of control mm -hmm. in the process of healing because that's only going to put me further down this anxious whole. Yeah. Uh, right. And so I like that. I think that's really, really good. Yeah. So we, we've talked about, you know, emotions and I know that people go through seasons and m emotions and walking through these feelings can be healthy. Uh, I think though, and I'd love to hear your opinion. Sometimes we can find someone uh, who's maybe in a, in a point for a lot of different reasons, extreme loss, where maybe they're not at an emotionally healthy place. So they can't even process these emotions uh, in a healthy way. What would you say about someone who maybe finds themselves kind of in that place? I would say uh, that's okay. <laughs> I think that if I can share a personal sure. story, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I shared earlier, like I thought emotions were something to control and I thought I could easily like just categorize my life based right. off of like what I wanted to perform in that setting. <laughs> and And I hit a point in my life a few years ago where I couldn't do that. Like mm -hmm. the emotions I was experiencing were intense and I couldn't keep them in a box separate from my relationships. And, um, I think the first thing that I did that was helpful was I was honest with the people around me about how I was doing. And, you know, I'm thankful that the people I have surrounding me were, uh, accepting mm -hmm. and just yeah. said like, that's okay, Maddie. Like you don't, ha you don't have to be you don't have to have it all together for me to still love you and to yeah. still be your friend and still be your family. Like, this is what I'm here for. Like, sure. um, so knowing that like, that's okay. And, um, then knowing that it's okay to need a little additional support yeah. <laughs> in your life during different times. Um, and so going to counseling is a huge strength for, for anyone. Um, it's been a help in my life. Yeah. So obviously it's what I, 
I do professionally. So I, I'm like, this is great. I think everybody should <laughs> should access sure, yeah. counseling if you if you can, if you have access to it. Not everybody does, and I I understand that. I think 2020 helped remove a lot of barriers for mm-hmm. people um, trying to access counseling. So um, yeah, that, that's where I would I would start. That's yeah. what I would tell my friend. No, yeah, I love that. You know. All the pastors on staff, myself and included, you know, we meet with a counselor once a quarter. At least that's we try. Sometimes it's twice a quarter. Sometimes <laughs> it's, you know it, it can vary. But we like we like to meet because it, sometimes it's just good to have an opportunity to have that person where you can have that sounding wall where you can talk about things that you're going through, whether it's at work or at home and your relationships. Um, and I think honesty is is also something that's good. You know, we we've talked about this before. That some a lot of times people could actually get through some of the things they're going through if they could just be honest with their friend group mm-hmm. and their friend group could support them through that that you know that issue that that frustration that loss whatever the the case may be um, but especially in some Christian circles if it's not okay to have feelings if it's not okay to be hurting well then you're not going to admit it to your friend group so therefore you're bottling all that up and then you feel alone uh, and then you, really your only option is is to be stuck, uh, or to turn to a third party that you, you know, is, is a safe place, which that third party, there's nothing wrong. But if we can create within our, our culture uh, of a church, like, Hey, it's okay to let someone know, like, I'm struggling with this. Yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with this, this issue. I'm dealing with this anxiety. Can you help me? Can you talk yeah. to me? Can you pray? Because the truth is, um, that's part of our relationship. And the reason we're supposed to be in relationship is because in that relationship, when, when someone's maybe going through a hard time, the other person can lift them up, encourage them, mm-hmm. speak the truth over them. Uh, and six months down the road, the roles may be reversed. Yeah. But if you're in a healthy place, it's great. Uh, and so I think that if we can create and, and have these ideas where we can allow ourselves to be honest with people we care about, and then also, this is important, and I've been guilty of this historically, uh, not judge when someone does say, like, I'm dealing with this and not be like, oh, you're just really weak because that's not the truth. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you know, it only takes you being in the weak place one time to realize they're not weak. Yeah. They're yeah. just going through something. So For sure. uh, I think that's a, a really good, good answer. And I think counseling is great. I think that the, you know, it's becoming less and less uh, of a stigma, mm-hmm. both in society as a whole and, and in the church world. Um, but I think having safe, healthy places to process what you're dealing with uh, is good. And when you have someone who can point you in the right direction, I think that's a, a, a really good, um, good thing. Okay. So can I add something? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you're listening to this podcast, it's because you're familiar with Destiny Church um, and maybe you're a member here, maybe you've come here a few times, but, uh, or maybe you never have and you just stumbled across this podcast. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to Destiny Church. Um, Jonathan, I think, You've done a good job at making sure there are resources mm-hmm, here yeah. for people. Um, man, and if you're out of service, you can go and talk to the prayer team or grab any of the pastors because there there are resources available within our church yeah. um, that I see you trying to even, you know, bolster bolster up by, you know, inviting me here. Even, yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, and at the end of this, we'll also have another link and in the description, we'll have some other resources, both for people who are local in the Broken Arrow, Tulsa area, but also if you're watching from somewhere else, uh, some online options and some other organizations that you can connect with no matter where you're at, uh, because if you need help, it, it's important. Uh, the last subject, and you know, we're not going to be able to go into <laughs> all the depths of this because it's obviously a big subject, yeah. but another one that people, because we talk about emotions and we talk about feelings and that's something. Uh, but there's another level of things that's maybe even less recognized or talked about uh, in in a lot of circles, which is uh, mental illness. Yeah. Can you kind of help define, you know, what is mental illness? How is that different from like emotions and feelings? Like what is the, the difference between those? Yeah, for sure. Um, first of all, mental illness is a health concern mm-hmm. and it's common. <laughs> and so I think there's a difference between, you know, having a hard time dealing with emotions in a tough season of life and, and struggling with mental illness. Um, both are okay. Uh, neither one is weak. Mm -hmm. Um, but mental illness is, is a health problem that is defined by a change in your emotions or your thinking or your behavior in a way that is, uh, affecting your functioning Mm -hmm. in more 
one or more areas of your life. So it's, it's getting to the point where, you know, you're not showing up to work or your relationship, your relationships are deeply affected or even just your, your responsibilities, um, are affected. And so understanding when those emotions have maybe progressed into something that could be a little more serious that you would definitely need to, um, seek professional help. for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And in, in that, because I think some people, they may find themselves there. They may think I may be at that point, but there's so much, because if you haven't done it, there's so much unknown and like, what's it going to be like? What are they going to do? Are they going to like lock me up in some insane asylum? Yeah. Cause I just watch TV and that's what they do. They put a straight jacket <laughs> on people and then you're stuck. And I don't want to do oh. that. What, what does it actually, like, what does that process look like? Like help us understand what people would, would do if they realize, man, I need to get help. What, what would that look like? It looks like making a call mm -hmm. and, uh, research actually shows the first step of making a call or making an appointment, um, automatically like provide some relief. Mm, yeah. And so I love that. Um, just that step of engagement and whether that's calling your, your church and asking, Hey, I need resources for, for counseling or, or talking to a friend, um, that, you know, has gone to counseling, just taking a step. And then it means going and talking to, um, a professional that cares about you yeah. and, and doesn't see you as someone that needs to be locked up in an, and, you know, yeah, an asylum absolutely. with a straight jacket. Um, they see you as a person with a health need that they're there to meet. No, I think that's good. And and I think that I love what you touch about. I think the scariest part is like that first step. And we see that in anything. You know, the first step to find healing really in anything is that admitting you have a problem and needing to, to move forward. We yeah. see that in every kind of area. And so, of course, mental health wouldn't be any different. Um, and, you know, I, I, I get excited about this conversation because we both graduated from ORU, yeah. we're ORU alumni. And, so of course, it's like ingrained in you, that whole whole person <laughs> idea of, like, yeah. you know, body, soul, and uh, and mind, and this whole idea of the complete person. Uh, and to me, that's an important thing as a church and as, a, as, a, as Christians that we need to be looking at all these areas because I think that they make us better followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, I think that if my emotions are at a healthy place, I can be a better follower of Jesus. I can be a better uh, husband to my wife. I can be a better father to my kid. And, and I can even keep myself at a place where I can have a, a deeper relationship with God because I'm able to hear him more clearly. If I'm dealing with all sorts of anxiety and every time I try to be still, my mind is nothing but going crazy about, you know, whatever I have un, un undealt with issue in my life, it's a lot harder for me to hear God's voice. He's talking, he's there, but my own mind is so is so cloudy. But if I can get some of these things and, and invite God into that process to find healing, uh, even in that, because that's the thing I think that in this whole process is like God cares. Yeah. Like he cares about your spirit. He cares about your physical body and he cares about your, your emotional mental health. Like he cares deeply about it. Um, and I think that there, that's part of the reason where when we talk about like this idea of, of the identity of mind of Christ, uh, you may not be feeling that way right now, but that's where he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we, we talk about that in other realms, like that we know that physically he wants us to be healed. Uh, and so we may be dealing with the symptom right now, but we know the identity that's long term. Yeah. And I think that's the truth in, in all these areas. And so mm -hmm. I'm excited to start having more conversations and start having more options and more opportunities uh, to be able to get connected. And uh, yeah, I think it's been good. You have any closing thoughts? I do. It was as you were talking about just the whole person and our yeah. ORU ness. Um, I came across a quote um, this week and this like faith and mental health podcast mm -hmm. I listened to um, by. Uh, a therapist called her name is Brittany Moses and uh, she has Instagram and you can follow her. Her stuff is really good and empowering. Uh, but she said this in one of her podcasts and I was like, I have to tell Jonathan. <laughs> so it, she said, we are biological, psychological, social, spiritual beings. If God cared to create us this way, we should care to acknowledge all of the parts of ourselves mm -hmm. If God purposefully wove all of these dynamics into our being, then we should care to give attention to the whole person God created. And I loved that quote because, yeah. and it really echoes what the point you were just making that like, if we can pay attention to those parts of us that God made, then we can hear God clear. We can have a deeper relationship with God. And um, I think that that's what I'm most 
passionate about helping people find. I love that. That's awesome. Well, hey, Maddie, thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for this having was awesome. Me. I'm really excited. I'm sure we'll get more opportunities to do this in the future. For everyone else who's out there, at the end of this podcast, there's going to be a screen that'll connect you and you'll have places where you can see some resources and different ways to get connected. Also in the description uh, tab, whether it's on the podcast or YouTube channel, you can see all that stuff. Uh, and there's different ways and opportunities to get connected. And so the thing I just want to encourage you about, if you're here and you're listening and you need help, that's okay. Everyone needs help sometimes. That's not a weakness. That's not a problem. You can find that help and you can find freedom on the other side. And the reality is this relationship with Christ is about bringing freedom to every area of your life. And that includes your mental health. And so if you need it, get some of those resources, get connected and start the process of finding healing in your life. And you won't regret it. Just take that first step. Well, listen, as always, know that God loves you, know that you're prayed for, and know that God has a destiny for you. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed what you just listened to, take a second, click the like button, or put a comment in the comment section. If you want to get more information or receive all the stuff that we post every single time, click the subscribe button so that it can be sent to you automatically. And as always, know that you are loved, that you are prayed for, and that God has a destiny for you. Have a great day.